Returning now to one of our top stories and the protests in Lebanon. Joining me now is Jean Abineda. He is the principal and founder of Abineda Advisory Services. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Well, so much anger we're seeing against the government. Now two ministers have resigned and the Prime Minister, Hassan Diab, is calling for early parliamentary elections. Is this enough? No, because the electoral law right now folk, uh, favors those who know how to use the system, which the demonstrators have shown since last October. They aren't organized. They don't have leadership. They really don't know how to contest the election successfully. So this plays into the hands of the old oligarchy, which says, throw out this government of technocrats that we appointed, and then who are you going to vote for? And many people, because of their knee-jerk reaction to vote for people they know will return to power the same people that destroyed the country in the first place. Hmm. Now, I'm glad you brought up the fact that these protests really did begin last October. Uh, demonstrators we saw massing the streets as the currency plummeted, uh, public services dried up, but even after the government of Saad Hariri was replaced, the economic crisis has continued to deteriorate. How do you see a way out? There's no simple way out because they have three major issues, as you can imagine. One is overspending in the public sector. Uh, between the gas company, subsidies to the gas company, primarily buying diesel fuel for the electricity, and public employment, government employees, that's 50% of the deficit in the country. And so for them to change, one, they have to reduce the deficit, which means firing people, eliminating subsidies, which people need in order to survive. Two, they have to eliminate corruption. And that means taking on the people who created this problem in the first place, which would be def very difficult. And three, they have to return liquidity to the government and therefore um, credibility to the, to the government and the banking system. And those things aren't going to happen quickly because they need external financing to do it. Hmm. And now you've got the International Donor Conference going on, uh, led by French President Emmanuel Macron. But he also says that you know, there needs to be a separate movement to tackle the corruption in the country. Uh, is this not some form of foreign interference? No, because actually for the last four Paris conferences, and these have been going on for 10 years now, they have tied money financing to the country to certain reforms. It's not financial interference because even Macron pointed out that the people are asking for this. They want an end to corruption. They want a clean civil service. They want a balanced and open, transparent budget. They want an honest uh, judiciary system that's independent of the government, uh, legislature, and the executive departments. So, no, this is not foreign interference. In fact, it may take foreign leverage to make these things happen. Hmm. So, Lebanese politics, as we know, is defined by its power-sharing system, you know, to provide all those religious groups, 18 of them, with representation. But many now say the system is backfiring uh, by creating sectarian interests instead of a national one. Is that a fair assessment? Yes. I mean, as far back as 1968, Michael Hudson, a great scholar of the Middle East, wrote a book called Lebanon, the Precarious Republic. And he said the problem with Lebanon is there are no Lebanese. Hmm. They're all representatives of sex. And that has continued to today. And that's really the Achilles heel of the country is that people identify themselves in terms of either their religious affiliation or the villages they come from. And that really undercuts any kind of national identity for Lebanon. Hmm. So what will it take for the country to you know, maybe go back to the drawing board, possibly look at a new system that will eventually erase the ruling elite? Well, you've raised a good question there, and, and actually the, the answers are already done in Lebanon. They already have blueprints for that. They've been talking about it for 10 years and haven't done anything about it. They have, the, they have two options in terms of representation in Parliament. One, as, a, as called for in the Taif Agreement, which ended the Civil War, is to create a Senate where you have sectarian representatives, and then the House of Parliament, which is based more on non-sectarian uh, regional or national voting. Secondly, they, so they can redo the electoral system. It's certainly possible. Two, they need to start aggregating the interests that people have into political platforms. Throw out the old parties, people come up with new ideas and, and new figures to lead. Now we're seeing already, as you pointed out, resignations from parliament, resignations from the government. And these people can help form a nucleus around which people may join and identify an agenda that's common. I mean, one of the real concerns for Lebanon is there's no unifying vision. Hmm. So we believe 
that there needs to be an effort of all these different groups to come together and say, this is what we want Lebanon to be. And do you see that Let's moment happening here. now, um, Jean? Do you see that moment happening now between the economic crisis, the pandemic, and now these explosions exposing the divisions? Do you think this is the time? Yes, it has to be. There is no better time. As you can see, people are already taking over government buildings. There's a lot of violence in the street, which was not happening in the previous uh, demonstrations. So the only way that's going to come about is if people come up and say, we've got a better way forward. And the better way forward is to have clean elections under new electoral law and to hold accountable those people who are responsible for not only the blast in Beirut, but this corruption and the malaise in the governments that have been going on for 30 years. Jean Abinader, we appreciate your insight. Thank you very much. You're welcome.